Hello and welcome to The Mill. I am your host, Dusty Crane. It feels like it's been a while since I've been in front of this camera with you guys, but I mean, it hasn't really been that long. Um, I did have a video last week, it was just earlier, but I'm, I'm glad to be back. Hope you're glad to see the, the mill pop back up in your feed. Um, one of the questions, this week I kind of, I took some questions from the, the Wingspan Facebook group and also, um, also have been asked several times, like, what are maybe the top five most powerful birds in the expansion or something like that? And so I thought I'd take a, a little crack at it and get some answers and see what I came up with. So when I was looking over, when I was looking over the birds, I remember the fact that, um, you know, Elizabeth kind of has a equation or something, some kind of mathematical breakdown that like, um, you know, that birds are kind of worth a certain range of points or something, or if, if it's going to have a star type nest, then maybe it has less eggs or, or it's worth less victory points, like some kind of balancing act to make sure that there's not any like, you know, just crazy bird that's like, you know, you pay one and it's worth, you know, 15 points or something. And, and, you know, that, you know, something that's not way out of sort. So what I kind of looked for is not necessarily, Hey, this bird is worth eight points cool that's that's just a, a one shot right there what, what, what i find most interesting is the birds that are low value points because it typically means that you can work them into your engine or something and and that's how they're going to benefit you the most um so in looking through the expansion i decided to look at the birds that were zero cost and one cost because um uh, or one victory point and zero victory point not cost forget i said that um but because I figured that the victory points are going to come in another way um, that's maybe more interesting. So the European expansion has three birds that are, have zero victory points just, you know, out the gate. Um, that's the black red start, the lesser white throat, and the long-tailed tit. Um, God, I'm going to try and behave myself, okay? I promise. Um, so the... The dog doesn't believe me if you just heard her sigh. Um, <laughs> you probably heard my wife sigh too, I'm sure, the both of them. Uh, anyway, uh, so the black red start is a just a single habitat bird. It is three food, star nest, four eggs. Um, the power is choose a habitat with no eggs and lay one egg on each bird in its habitat. Um, what I kind of like about this one is that you know, obviously you need to plan ahead to use this bird that you want no eggs in that habitat and then you could potentially add up to five with that one, um, which you can kind of see then where where those victory points are coming from is you get to add, you know, egg, eggs to all those birds. The lesser white throat, that's a two habitat bird, two food, so it's lower cost. It's a single nest type, it's a bull egg. Um, and you choose a habitat with no eggs and lay one egg on each bird in the habitat. So the same power as the other one. Um, the long-tailed tit uh, is a one habitat bird. It's a star, net two, or star nest and two food. And that's one of the new type that you place sideways to cover up two spots in your habitat and you pay the lower of the egg cost. Um, where I find those uh, to be particularly interesting is, in this one, it's a, it's a forest or a woodland uh, habitat type of bird. And so that in that, in that habitat, you're actually gaining food so I can see as maybe early on that if you were able to get that bird early that you could go ahead and immediately jump to getting more food from the feeder would be a potential benefit there. Um, so those were the the three zero victory point birds. There are also seven uh, one victory point birds and, and I'm not going to go through all the titles and the habitats um, that they go into but I kind of uh, looked at their powers and there was um, a couple of the brown powers that we're accustomed to seeing. One of them is draw two bird cards and tuck one uh, and keep one. So that, and that one is actually um, the and Anduin's Gull, uh, and that's draw bird cards that's typically in the food lane. So that's another one of those, um, if you can get an engine, you can get multiple actions out of a single row where you're you know, doing something you don't typically do. So if you're in the food row and you're able to lay out eggs or you're in, uh, you know, the egg row and you're able to draw bird cards, you know, some way to maximize those actions is is what I'm looking for there. And, and you're seeing that um, with that with that gull there that um, draw two bird cards, you can go ahead and tuck one and keep one. Um, the Dunnock, which is, this is one of those new teal powers, the end of round powers. 
Um, you choose one other player, and for each action cube in their grasslands, you lay one egg on this bird. Now, what I liked about this was, you know, people talk a lot about that egg spamming strategy. Um, and if you do find yourself in a situation, this bird would, you know, not necessarily stop them from doing that because they're going to get their points, but you're also going to benefit from that. So maybe that takes some of the sting away. I know some, some people are like, you're just spamming eggs in the last rounds, which you know, bother some people. This way, maybe it bothers you less if you're gaining a benefit from it too. The Dunnick uh, gives you that. The Eurasian Magpie, that's another one of those teal powers where you choose one other player um, for their, it's the same thing as the egg the last one, you know, if they've, you know, taking actions in that grasslands, you're benefiting from that too. Um, the Griffin Vulture is one where it doesn't cost any food whatsoever to put it out there. Uh, but you choose any one player, even yourself, and then you can cash food on top of it um, for each predator bird that you or that other player has in, in play. So um, another one of those situations where you're actually looking to someone else and, and what they've done. It, it, and that's really kind of like what one of the focuses of this expansion is you can definitely see the intention on, you know, some people consider it a, a negative connotation. I heard people say this is just a multiplayer solitaire or, or whatever. This definitely seems like some emphasis was placed on, no, let's go ahead and pay more attention to what other people are doing. There's more direct interaction too in terms of some of these birds allow you to, um, you know, if someone has a worm, take a worm and then they can draw food from the bird feeder. I saw some people upset about this too or, or concerned about this too because maybe you're um you know gathering food because you want to play this bird and then someone takes a food type i i can understand that concern elizabeth found in play testing that because they were also able to grab a food from the bird feeder um maybe maybe you pivot and so instead of playing this bird that had that that worm cost or whatever now you're going to go ahead and oh there's a berry there that's actually something that i that i wanted but it wasn't in the feed or you know or wasn't i didn't have an opportunity to grab it and now i can take it um it's not going to cost me a turn to get it and now i can play this bird uh you know in, in my final action cube or whatever um so there is that focus on you know what other people are doing and what they have on their mat and so that's that's one of the things i like about this expansion um a couple more of those those uh single victory point birds is one of them is draw two bird cards all other players get one now this is um a, a bird that is in the wetlands this is savvy's warbler um, so you are typically already getting bird cards in the wetlands but this is just there are uh, several different birds that actually give you more of what you normally get out of that area so like if you play a, a bird in the woodlands or in the forest there that you are getting extra food or and maybe an extra food type of a certain type um, so you see that in this expansion too i don't necessarily know how interesting they are but i kind of captioned it as sort of interesting stats um, for all of the talk we heard or maybe we in, in people talking um, just drew attention to this but we'd noticed hey there's this new bird type you can lay it sideways for that having attention drawn to it it's really not prevalent in the expansion too much i mentioned there's only four birds that you can actually play sideways in the whole expansion there um, there's two in the forest one in the grasslands and one in the wetlands so um you're not gonna you know bump into these every single game um, there's only five new pink power birds um, there's 21 of the new teal end of round power birds. Um, and let's see here. Oh, and, and three of those, which I find kind of interesting, three of those are actually birds that allow them to count as double toward the end round goals if they apply. So if, um, let's say you have an end round goal that says, you know, how many eggs on a certain bird type and this bird has, you know, two eggs on it. Well, toward the end of round goal, goals, if, if it's just birds with eggs, then instead of counting as one bird, it counts as two birds. And so um, I, I found that was kind of a way to be a little bit sneaky if people aren't paying really close attention to your mat and they're not paying really close attention to your bird powers. You know, they might gloss right over there and be like, oh, okay, well, he's got two birds with, with eggs, you know, and then you're like, oh, nope, hey, guess what? I actually, I don't. You know, they thought they were tied, but you jumped out ahead. So there's a little way to be sneaky. Um, so uh, those are my sort of interesting uh, facts. Um, I also did do some questions. 
my dog is snoring really loud, so if you can hear that, I apologize. Um, but I did, like I mentioned, ask some questions on the Wingspan uh, Facebook page, so I'm just going to go ahead and get to those. Pete asked, will I send him my copy? Now, Pete instructed me to answer this with yes, however, I am going to answer with no because I am really enjoying this and I would like to continue enjoying this. Um, sorry, Pete. Uh, David asked, how expanded does it feel? The end of round goals sound cool, but they won't pop up with a lot of frequency. Same with the sideway birds. Um, it's true that you won't see a lot of the sideway, sideways birds. Um, and how expanded does it feel? Now, this is actually a good question because at first as I was, I was looking through the cards and I was kind of trying to wrap my mind around the expansion, I felt like some of it kind of felt samey, samey, and and yeah, there's the end around goals, which which are new, but like it kind of felt like you're getting the same powers, um, and when I first got the expansion, I decided I'm gonna play with just the expansion. I wanted to experience the new bird cards, the new powers, um, and what I found in playing just the expansion, just solo, um, or in two player, was alone. The expansion, it doesn't feel samey at all. It feels, um, it just feels like something is missing. Like, it feels like, um, the, the only conclusion I can draw is, like, it felt like it was meant to be with the base card set, which makes sense with it being an expansion, but it doesn't feel like this was meant to stand alone. It felt like it was meant to to expand upon, you know, the base game, which I know expansion, all that stuff sounds funny, but, you know, a lot of people are are thinking I'm going to get this game and I'm going to play this as a standalone because, you know, I'm a European, you know, game player and I want to see all these birds. And I think for a game or two, that's a really fun way to learn the new birds and, and to learn the new powers. But I do think at the end of the, at the, end of the game, um, you do kind of go, oh, you know what, I was, I was really... I've, I've grown accustomed to using this particular, you know, if I can get this bird or this type of bird in my hand, then it plays really well in the grasslands or it, you know, you just get kind of, kind of accustomed to the, the birds that you are familiar with seeing. And so it just felt different. Like the powers that they, that are on the cards may at first glance appear samesy, but they don't feel that way at all. And so does it feel expanded I, I do think once you mix them all together, it does. And, it, and it's true that because there are so many more of the base card or the base cards that it feels like you're not bumping into those European cards super frequently. I mean, I don't know what the actual, if it's, you know, one in three cards or whatever that, that ratio is. I didn't figure it out. But um, I do feel like when they do come up in your normal game, they're they're kind of they they kind of are a welcome a welcome addition. They feel like it's it's exciting to get those new mechanics and play with the existing set in consideration. Um, so I do think that this is you're going to go. Oh, you know I don't think I see the European I didn't see the European cards as much in this game that we played, but. Um, when they do come up, they feel like they're exciting to get into the rotation. Um, Tim asks, are there any birds that have more than nine points? Um, and yeah, yeah, there are. Um, the house sparrow itself is worth six victory points. It holds five eggs. And at the end of the round, um, you can discard up to five grain to tuck a card from the deck behind it. Um, potentially, so if you were to get this bird right off the gate and you happen to have five grain every single time the, the end of the round was up, potentially that card alone is, worth, let's see, I figured it out here, the, the, is worth 31 points just for that one bird. If you were able to take advantage every single round to the full capacity of the bird starting right from the first round. Um, now there's another bird in the in the collection that is is similar. It holds uh, it starts with five victory points. It holds two eggs, but this one you can discard any food type. Uh, it's not just the grain, um, and this one's a potential up to 27 victory points. So getting back to that question of what I think 
is the most powerful bird in the expansion. I'm probably going to go with that Eurasian Collared Dove because what I like about this bird in particular is it's an end around goal. Like you can literally be sitting at the end of the at the end of the game and maybe you have a ton of extra food and you don't want to maybe get rid of all the food because that's the tiebreaker is, you know, amount of food you have left over, but you might be able to go ahead and I'm going to trade, you know, these five in for five extra victory points. That might be, you know, what sets you over the edge. So it doesn't seem like much, but when you take into account that you can trade in any food type at the end of every round, if you were to get this in the first round, um, I think that's a pretty, pretty nice benefit there. So that one's up to a potential of 27. Um, in terms of just, you know, I guess the boring stat of, of just the point, the bird is worth this many points. It holds this many eggs. The great tit is worth four victory points and holds six eggs. So that right there is a, a total of 10. So you don't necessarily have to do any kind of uh, gameplay magic to, to get those numbers up above nine. Um, Malcolm asks, do the Ravens still seem as powerful? Um, yeah, yeah, I'd, I'd say so. Um, and, and not in a, in a bad way. Uh, if anything, because there's more cards, they're going to come up less. But I, I really think that the strategies that you had in for the first wingspan still apply to the expansion with the possible exception of the fact that, you know, now people can take advantage of your egg spamming strategy. Um, or, you know, if, uh, let's see here, if, what was I thinking? Oh, it, it, it's going to come up less frequently, but also there, there are, yeah, like I said, people that are able to benefit. Oh, there's also, I know there, I finally caught that train there. Uh, the end of round goals, the new ones that come with the, the game, the end of round goal tiles, that there are some of them that are, you know, your benefit or what you're competing for is no eggs. And so at the beginning of the game, maybe that's easier to come by than, uh, you know, birds with no eggs toward the end of the game. You might have to decide or find yourself in a position where you have to go, uh, are the points that I would gain here in the final round worth it? Or, you know, am I going to go ahead and take these eggs and uh, take the victory points from that and, and have less? So that is um, one thing to consider there. I don't think anything takes away from the power of those birds. Malcolm also asked what's your favorite thing about EE, and that, I, I'd really, I really do think that my favorite thing about the European uh, expansion, aside from the great new powers, is it's hard. There's, for some reason, the end-around goal tiles, I've always found that those end-around goal, goal tiles, I, I may be one of those people that gets distracted by that, maybe I focus too much on it, but because that is the way I play the game, having a new thing to focus on, having all these new goal tile and around goal tiles to focus on has really kind of changed, you know, maybe what I'm going for from round to round. Joshua asks, what's new for Automa? And the answer is they get a couple of new goal cards. Um, that's something. And they're, they're only for the Automa, um, which is kind of neat. Uh, one of them is um, birds that are worth three or four points. Uh, the Automa can keep up to two of them. The other one is birds, their goal is birds that are worth five, six, or seven victory points. Now, thankfully, they only keep one of those, but it, it is uh, having these goals for the Automa is a, a nice change. At first, I was like, wow, these are really powerful. And then when I got to thinking about it, that the alternative is, you know, they're getting a face down card, which is probably worth four victory points anyway, um, if you're playing on normal mode. So it's it's not... A, a huge shift, um, but those are those are nice goal cards. That's a nice change, and then it's not really a change for the Atoma. The Atoma does also get um, a couple of new scoring cards, which just um, you know for each goal, uh, for each round tells you you know where they currently stand for that goal. So uh, these new end of round powers are uh, birds in one row, filled columns, birds with tucked cards, white or no powers. Birds with greater than four victory points. Food in your personal supply, bird cards in hand. Birds with no eggs. Brown powers or food costs of played birds. And so, um, you know, it's funny, like just adding a few end around gold cards, it does feel like a very different game of wingspan. At least it, it did for me. 
Um, Joshua asks, what bird would you put on the cover if you won the charity auction? Uh, that's actually a good opportunity for me to mention that um, Stonemeyer every year does a, a charity auction and it goes up in November. Jamie will announce who those, um, he goes to contra uh, uh, content creators that he likes and, and asks them what cause would they like to donate to? And he usually has a, a product that he auctions off. Last year, I think it was the a full set of the Metal Max. And um, I don't remember what it was the, the year before, but in any case, this year, it, it's wild. It is a, it, it's a copy of Wingspan, which obviously most of us probably have, but it's a custom cover. You get to choose the birds that are on the cover and are on the outside edges of the box. So that is super cool to keep with Joshua's question though, what bird would you put on the cover? And that is a hard one. I know you're, uh, you're thinking he's going to say a pretty bird. And, uh, I understand why you'd say that because that seems to be my answer to, to what, what's your favorite bird. I don't know. It's one of the pretty ones. Um, I think I, I was kind of drawn be, between um, a couple, and it, and it shouldn't be any surprise that they are pretty birds, but um, I really, there's, and, and I meant to grab the card and so I could say it, but there's one that's a very deep blue. Um, it's not a blue bird, but um, it's it's really pretty. I like that one. Um, I also really, really like the, the Kingfisher that's in the, the new expansion, but... The bald eagle was my dad's favorite bird. There's been bald eagles around my house, um, you know, uh, drawings or paintings or, or sculptures um, that my that my dad had bought statues. So I kind of think that if I did win the auction, I think it would probably, I think I'd go with the sentimental choice and I think I'd go with bald eagle. Um, but I would have pretty birds all around the side of the box. I promise you that. Uh, <laughs> let's see. The final question Josh asks is, what birds would have to leave the game if, if uh, you know, if affected by Brexit? Um, no birds. Birds do not acknowledge or adhere to the laws of man, so every bird is staying. That's that's just all there is to it, and that is all there is to this week's episode of the Mill. That went longer than I was expecting, but I just I've I've really enjoyed the European expansion. I enjoyed talking about it. Um, you may have seen there's a, a PDF out there that shows every bird in the expansion that's powers. What birds, I'll go ahead and toss it in the show notes too. Um, what birds are you most excited to play with now that that sheet has come out? Or maybe which power or which type that has been announced uh, looks the most fun to you? I look forward to hearing from you and we will talk to you again next week. Take care of yourself and take care of each other. Thanks for watching. Bye.